Mudbox is a very powerful tool for modeling and sculpting. Uh, but there's one other thing also that it does very well, and that is creating textures. And we can get to these tools of painting textures here under Paint Tools. Now, in my previous videos, I've mentioned the importance when sculpting of working in layers. While you don't have to work in layers when you sculpt, layers gives you a lot more power uh, for you know, modeling and sculpting. Uh, we also use layers when painting. And you'll find here that we can switch over to our paint layers. Now, I currently don't have any paint layers here, uh, but we'll create a layer now. Now, unlike the Sculpt tools, you don't have to worry about forgetting to create a paint layer uh, because if I select my paintbrush here and come over here to the tools here, let's say I want to change, well, I'll keep this blue color here that I have it set to right now. Uh, let's say I want to paint blue on this, but I haven't created a layer yet. As soon as I start painting, I'll get this pop-up that says Create New Paint Layer. We can give it a name, uh, and we can also say what channel we want to paint it on. We have this drop down here. We're going to keep this diffuse because that refers to the color. However, you'll see that we also have a bunch of other options here as well. Painting on the mesh is very simple, very easy. Uh, as you can see, I simply use my mouse or tablet, if you're using a tablet, and paint directly on the mesh itself. Just like the Sculpt tools, we can change the size of the brush. You can either change it here in the uh, settings for the tool, or you can use the B key, just like the, um, just like the Sculpt tools. Now, while I don't have to remember specifically to create layers, there is one thing uh, that you should remember, and that is to actually create a new material. Currently, if we look at my object list, I have only one material in my scene, default material, and that is what I'm currently painting on. Let me show you what that results in. So I'm going to come over here to my Select Move Tools, and I'll select my Translate tool. This will allow me to move this mesh off to the side here. And I'm going to create a new mesh by going to Create Mesh. And we'll choose, let's say, the human body. So you can see the problem here. The problem is that I only have one material in my scene and it is my default material so therefore whatever I paint on this mesh here will also be applied to any other mesh that I create. That's why you're going to want to create your own materials before you paint on them. Creating a new material for your meshes are very it's very easy. Uh, I'm going to right click on my sphere and go to assign new material and I will select mudbox material. This will create a brand new material for my mesh. Notice that within the material I can change some of the properties immediately such as the diffuse color which we can also change to any hue on our color wheel here, as well as changing its saturation and brightness. We can also change the uh, specular color. as well as gloss, incandescence, opacity, and many other properties.
I'm going to go to my object list and I'll select this human body mesh and delete it. Uh, and I will also take my sphere and we'll move it back to the origin. You can see I'm going to just do that here in the right hand side under its translate. I'll set it back to zero. I will also deselect it. Yeah. You'll notice in my object list here that we now have two materials, my default material and the material that I created. If I need to make any changes or want to make any changes to this material, I can simply go to my object list, select the material, and see all its base properties here. I recommend exploring and experimenting with these properties to better understand what they do. Diffuse, of course, is very straightforward. That refers to the color, the base color of the object itself. Uh, however, it's a good idea to play around with the specular color and, and see what, uh, what that does as well as the gloss value. You can see how that affects this specular highlight. Incandescence. Capacity, which we looked at a little bit earlier. You know that that's going to be uh, how opaque the object is. The less opaque, the more transparent it becomes. And we'll look at some of these other properties in a future video. Now, these are really just their base colors for these different properties of my material. If we return to the paint tools here, and uh, we'll go to the layers, to the paint layers, because I created a new material, I currently don't have any layers on the material. Uh, but once again, if I select my paintbrush, I can start painting on it. I can either create a layer here and, and choose what property I'm going to paint. Or if I haven't created any layers yet and I simply start painting on it, the create new paint layer will pop up. Again, remember that the diffuse has to do with the color. So I'll go ahead and say, okay, it will create my layer here. And once again, we can start painting on it. Choose the color for your brush and paint. Remember that you can change the size of your brush either by using the uh, settings here in the right hand uh, side of the user interface or using the B key of course will change the size of the brush more interactively. You can also change the strength of the brush You can also accomplish that using the M key on your keyboard. Just like the sculpt tools, you can mirror as well as using stamps and stencils, which we'll look at in a future video. In addition, I can also flood. Notice that it didn't flood this other side because it is currently set to flood from camera. Now if I were to select my erase tool 
and erase, then we'll get that background color of the original material. The other thing is that because it's a layer, we can hide or unhide the layer. We can also have multiple diffuse layers, which uh, I'll demonstrate in a future video. Uh, like the sculpt layers, we can also decrease the uh, intensity of the layer. Here it is at 25% or 50%. You can, of course, paint uh, multiple colors on your, uh, on your color channel here. But also, we can add new additional layers for other properties of our material. Uh, this time, instead of the diffuse, let's add an opacity channel. Remember that opacity has to do with how opaque the object is or how transparent it is. For opacity, I would probably use black, white, and gray values uh, rather than a color. I'll change my brush to white. You'll see nothing happens. Change my brush to black, and we get this transparency. Currently, I still have my highlight on the, uh, the model, so that's why we're still seeing that. Even though the uh, mesh is transparent here. If we were to do gray values, it'll become semi-transparent. And if we want to actually see this layer um, and where we've painted, what we can do is right click on the layer and select solo as diffused. That way we can look at just our opacity layer here. So when you no longer want to see it solo as diffused, simply right click on the layer once again, and you can unsolo it. I really recommend playing around with these materials. Don't try to make anything initially, just explore and experiment with all the different types of channels that you can create for these materials slash shaders. Uh, for instance, you can uh, try out the gloss layer or the specular layer. Here, let's try the incandescence. This one uh, creates a nice glow to it. So if I were to press L on my keyboard and put it in shadow, you'll see that it looks like light is actually being emitted from that part of the material and mesh. If we try the specular, I can change the specular highlights color here. Again, if I want to, I can right click on that layer and say uh, solo is diffused so that we can see uh, what has been painted on that layer.
and if we want to increase the or decrease the intensity of our specular highlight, we can add the gloss channel onto the material. I'm going to take that gloss and I'm going to do a uh, solo is diffused. You'll see that I have painted nothing on here. Uh, perhaps I'll select a kind of middle gray value here. And I will flood paint the layer. Unlike the from camera, this will actually flood it on the whole entire mesh. And we can explore some of these different values here and see how they affect that specular highlight. Once again, I'll come over to the layer and unsolo it. See my highlight here and You'll see how it changes. A little bit hard to see there. Let's uh, turn off the diffuse so that you can see that a little better. Unfortunately, I painted it over the, uh, in the uh, transparency, it looks like, as well. Not transparency, but rather the... Uh... No, let's see. Okay, we'll turn on the gloss. Okay, I'm actually not sure what's going on there. It looks like it's transparent there. Actually, I think I do know what the problem is. If we take a look at the gloss layer, but this shows you how uh, effective it is to be able to hide these different properties so that you can troubleshoot what's going on with your materials. Uh, here I can see that I only have the gloss on, and I'm getting this weird result here with my highlight that I've uh, painted here for the gloss. I'm going to right-click on that channel, Solo as Diffused, and this is the problem here. But actually, gloss doesn't work well with black. You should have it have some, some kind of gray value, and you'll find that the gloss works better then. but it should never go to absolute black. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, unsolo that and turn on these other properties. And you'll see how my highlight differs according to how I painted uh, that gloss layer, that the, the specular highlight becomes bigger. You can really see it here because I have that big contrast. Let's go ahead and take this area here, and I'm still in my gloss layer, and I'll make that white, and you'll see that the uh, specular highlight becomes even smaller. Anyway, we'll cover these, uh, these concepts a little bit more in depth in a later video, but I hope that this is enough to get you started exploring Materials in Mudbox. Thank you for watching.